Hello, my name is Rachel, and I love playing with resin. So, I guess a week or so ago, you guys might remember, I had gotten this mold from Temu. It was a cat shelf, and we made one together, and this is how it came out, and I think he's so cute, and I figured out a little, I had these, like, picture frame hangy things that I was able to screw into uh, him as well so that he had a little place to actually hang him, because other than that, I guess you could also put, like, nails through the eyes. But anyway, that's... <laughs> But yeah, I love the way it came out. I, I was just like, it came out so much better than I, I thought it was going to that I bought several more. <laughs> so today I'm going to show you the, the new ones that I bought and we're going to try each one so that we can find out. Like this one I discovered takes just over five ounces of resin to make. And we're going to find out how much each of these takes to make. And first up here, we have a death moth. Well, I'm not sure if it's a death moth, because it doesn't have the skull there, but it's a moth. We have the moth, and it's got the moon phases, and of course your little shelf thingy. And then the next one is a snake one, which I thought was really neat looking. Again, moon phases with a snake and the little shelf. And the final one, which I'm super excited for, we have a bat one. <laughs> I just think he's so cute. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to flip around to craft vision and I'm going to, you know, do some of the, the mold painting with you guys and we're going to do it. It's going to be in three sections because I want to do each one a second. I need to stop rambling about it so we can just go do it. But yeah, we're going to paint the molds with some mica powder. We're going to pour in the resin and figure out how much resin each of these molds takes. And then, of course, the best part is we're going to unmold them and put them together. So I will see you guys in Craft Vision in just a second. So we are going to start with the mystical moth shelf here and first thing I have to do of course is put my resin powders down inside the mold because I like to do that I feel like my colors are more vibrant that way and then I do already have it on a cutting mat so that I can easily carry it over to the heat mat and I did finally get a leveling board so I won't hopefully won't have those weird issues I've been having with the uneven surface my heat mat was on and you do have to pay attention when you're uh, shopping for a leveling board you're using with a heat mat because several of them had reviews that stated they were too thin and would warp with the heat so definitely pay attention to those reviews and to you know just the mat itself the leveling mat itself the one I found was nice and thick and that shouldn't be a problem all right so first let's just do the, some of this painting and of course I will I won't show you all of it and I'm going to skip some of it but we're going to do uh, each of these shelves like in a section so we're going to do this from start to finish and then we'll move on to the next one so I, th I think that'll be easier than painting them all and then filling them all because of how I want to measure my resin and I want to make sure you know how much resin goes in here and if I make too much or not enough I gotta make extra batches and then I have to worry about being fast enough to get there. Anyway, it's a mess. I, I don't need to tell you all the reasons. Let me just get into painting. <laughs> Okay, so I stirred up eight ounces of resin. It's a little bit cold here in this room, so my resin was a bit congealed, but I used my heat gun while I was stirring it to help make it more liquidy, and I feel like it it worked. It's It should be hopefully mixed in now. The uh, 
the hardener was fine the hardener was nice nice and liquidy but hopefully they're combined well enough now and I also added several spoons of this black mica powder I, I was running out of mica powder so I just splurged and got the huge jar because <laughs> I feel like black is a color that I always need it makes a really good base it makes your colors pop I think but okay I think we've got this stirred up enough and now we're going to find out if uh, eight ounces is enough to fill this or if I'm going to have to make more. So we only have about half a uh, ounce left so this took seven and a half ounces to completely fill the entire thing so but I can still do it all with one cup so that's good and I'll have to figure out something to do with this little extra bit here in a minute I'm going to transfer this over and then we'll be back when this is done to assemble it and then we'll start on the next one so it only took four hours on the heat mat they are done uh, the leveling mat did make it a lot better but I have some weirdness going on along the edges and I think that was from it was like half solidified and I tried to use the heat gun to get rid of some of these extra bubbles but it was already too solidified but it was still liquidy enough that I think I shifted some of it when I put the heat gun on it and I did miss some serious bubbles like there's one here that's going to probably be an issue and one there like well, may not be too bad but still annoying but anyway, let's do these bonus un, uh, moldings first. I just made two little matte black skulls because I had a very small amount left and I just wanted to, you know, use it up there. And as often happens when I don't use mica powder in my molds, there's tiny little pinprick holes there. Don't know if you can see those. Put those to the side. And then this is my other extra which I did paint the mold. And here we have a nice little vampire skull, which I did get a little extra overflow there, but I need to trim him up, but still looks really nice there. And then let's, why, we're, why we are here, let's unmold this thing. All right, so here is this part. I think I need to work on my leveling just a little. He seems maybe a touch not completely straight. I don't know. It's hard to tell. But anyway, the colors came out really nice. I really like the uh, the coloring. So that came out pretty. But I do have those large holes. They It didn't go all the way through, though. It's just here on the back. So that's good. And it looks like these went a little deeper, but still didn't make it to the front. So from the front, it'll still be fine. All right. And then this is the support bit, which I don't add any micas to because, you know, you're just going to, you're not going to see it. It's going to be underneath on the shelf. But you can see there's a ton of pinprick holes there. Also, I think uh, because it was cold and my resin was a little gloopy, I think that might have affected things a little too with the holes, the extra air bubbles. But here is our shelf, which I just put some random colors and glitter on. And let's assemble it. It goes down in here. And then he just pushes right in there. And boom, we have a shelf. So success. And nice and it and they're nice and sturdy they're really sturdy but you can see where I had some warping because it's not there's a little gap there it's not flush against so I need to I do need to work on with my um, leveling mat to make sure that it is level I think I might have messed up a foot and also it looks like like I missed there were some air bubbles down in there See, the pieces still seem some like it just didn't make it down in there to pick up the uh, the micas. But yeah, but we have two more to go. So I need to stop talking about this one and get started on the next one. So today we are doing the bat shelf. 
So I'm going to start with coloring in the mold and then pouring, you know, you know the process. Let's get to it. So I have made seven ounces of resin. This is a new to me brand of resin. I, I don't use any specific brand. I just buy whichever is the least expensive I can find at the time on Amazon. So it te the type I use tends to change every time. Uh, th this one so far, it does seem to have quite a few bubbles in there. Hopefully we can get them out with the heat gun. Uh, it is, again, it's just a little cool for, for resin in my room, and I, I just, it, and that causes problems because that makes it, like, thicker and harder to stir up. <laughs> but I also did add three spoons of this black pigment powder, and I only did seven ounces because the last one took seven and a half ounces and was much larger than this. I actually was shooting for only six ounces, but I over poured a little. So we are now going to fill up this mold. Yep, and I have quite a bit here left. I have approximately, I have just over one ounce left. So six ounces would have been perfect because that's how much we used for this. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to figure out something to do with my extra ounce, but first let me take this over to the heating mat and I'll see you guys when it's ready. So four hours later, uh, the heat mat did cure this in just four hours. There were a few more bubbles that popped up after I finished my last go over with the heat gun, but that, that always happens. But like I said, this is a new resin to me. I was able with the remaining uh, um, ounce of resin, make quite a few other things, which I'm actually not going to do here. I put them aside to do a little unmolding reel for uh, TikTok or Instagram, but let's just, let's unmold this and put it together. Okay, let's see how this part's looking. It's, it's an act, this one's actually nice and pretty flat. I did finally get a leveling board and I feel like it is working reasonably well there. I, one thing I did forget to do was to color in inside this diamond with the little those parts I should have done a different color it looks like there's also some bubbles that cause some like pieces of that being missing but that's fine those are all normal things with this and let's get the other couple parts out actually uh, well I w will say for this this new resin even though I had a whole bunch of bubbles there's almost no pinprick bubbles like when I don't put Mica powder is down in the mold. Usually I am covered in pinprick bubbles. But there's like almost none. There's like one there and one there. That is amazing. There's a few more up here. But I, I'm actually, can, I expected this to have all sorts of bubbles with how bubbly it was when I was just stirring it up. But so far, so good. All right, let's put the shelf together. Okay, I got that on, but I don't feel like it's down far enough. I don't think there's going to be enough room to get that in there. I wonder if I overfilled it. Okay, so what I had to do is I took this uh, glass nail, nail file and I had to shave this part down a little bit. So I went like this for a few minutes. And it's fitting now, but it's tight. But apparently it's just there wasn't enough room between these two parts. And I don't know if it was an overfill issue or a mold issue. I won't know until I make another one. <laughs> but as you can see, it's now flush like it's supposed to be down in there. So it is now fitting in there nicely. Oh, that was. <laughs> and then this one, 
I, hopefully this isn't, isn't built too big. Oh no. Oh no. It wasn't completely um, cured here at the end, so I've messed up the uh, end bits. Okay, so I'm not going to be able to finish this until these end bits have completely um, hardened. Apparently, I uh, must not have, they must have been hanging over the edge of my heat mat because everything else here is like super hard, but these bits here are just like still soft. And that's my fault. I probably had that bit hanging over the edge. And I can't really, like, because these are soft, too, so I can't force it in there. I can't put pressure on it to force it in there until after those solidify. But I can do a little half bit. <laughs> but it will work once those are hard and I can fight with it and get it down in there. And then it w it'll work as a shelf. So this one, this one is fine. I just need to wait until it finishes curing so I can get the shelf in there. But this one did, so far has had the most issues of any of them. Well, I guess this is only our third one, one I've done in a previous video, and then the one you would have just seen. So yeah, this is <laughs> this one has a few issues that I'm going to have to work with, but I, I think it'll all work out in the end. This again, this issue was my fault. That that wasn't the mold's fault. I, I just didn't get it cured properly. You see, I got fingerprints all in it now. But anyway, this will work in the end, and let's move on to the next one. I am back again. I decided not to show the painting of the mold and the filling of the mold this time around because seeing it twice is more than enough. You already have the idea of what I was doing there. But this is the final mold. This is the snake one. So we're going to see how this one came out. Here are three pieces. Once again, I did not use any micas on this piece, and this is that new resin. And again, there's like there's some pin prick holes up here, but not as many on this flat surface like there usually is, so that's good. Let's see if this one's easier to assemble than the bat mold, which I did eventually get together. Oh yeah, no, that slipped right in. That slipped right in with no problem. <laughs> Let's try the uh, shelf part. Oh yeah, this one was super easy to assemble. Look at that. Perfect. See, everything's in there nice and good. Okay guys, so obviously this is not a filming day for me. I'm <laughs> no makeup. I'm in my new favorite sweatshirt from Temu. I, I swear I've been living in this thing. Don't worry, I do take it off and wash it every day or two. <laughs> or two or three. <laughs> but anyway, let's talk about these shelves. So I did finally get the bat shelf together, but I had to filed down on the shelf the side edges a little bit <laughs> so this one the pieces did not fit in great and I don't know if I just overfilled the mold or if it's just the mold itself I'll show you show you here I mean now that it's together it's perfectly fine but it's not one I could easily take apart and put back together <laughs> but yeah I mean it still came out super cute I really love these I think they they are so cute but yeah that bat one has been my least favorite assembly wise, but it might be my favorite appearance wise. <laughs> so I just think it's so cute. And then of course that first one we did, which was the Lunar Moth, um, that one was fine, easy to assemble. And then the one we just completed, which is this, the little snake shelf. And this one was super easy to assemble. So yeah, that's, that's it guys, that's everything. Uh, I'm, I'm really happy I did finally get a leveling board that really seems to have been helping with these larger pieces. They're not nearly as warped as they had been previously. Like the first one I did, the cat, you can see how just how warped <laughs> he is. But you can see how nice and straight the, the newer ones are. <laughs> but yeah, these shelves are so cute. And, and I do I do recommend them. Just a few things. Uh, it was my resin, but this one I did have a lot of pinprick bubbles on. But like all these tiny little holes in the the wings, uh, you can get a lot of um, like issues with the the resin actually getting down in there. So I have a lot of uh, missing what should be raised bits, but instead they just came out as holes because they just all air bubbled. But uh, this one. Technically would have a similar issue with those leaves, but it's still, they came out really good, I think. So yeah, I love it. 
and the bat one I just had to fight to assemble it but so cute but let me know what you thought about these three down in the comments below I'm sorry for such a long video if you did enjoy it please give it a thumbs up if you didn't enjoy it of course you can give it a thumbs down please tell me all about it in the comments below and please subscribe to the channel and there will be associate links for all four of these molds including the cat one from last time <laughs> down in the uh the description box below and I hope everyone is just staying happy, healthy, and safe in this incredibly crazy world we're living in. And I will talk to you all soon. Bye-bye.